There is a river in southern France which bends like the crescent of the moon. And on this bend is a city and a region with a spirit that, once tasted, lingers in the heart forever. Bordeaux rises proudly from the Aquitaine region of southwest France, 300 miles from Paris and a one-hour drive from the Atlantic coast. Since the Romans first crushed grapes along the banks of the Garonne River, wine has been the lifeblood of this place. The city of Bordeaux possesses an elegance and easy charm that makes even Paris look on with envy. Yet, despite its deep body of 18th century grandeur, Bordeaux overflows with youthful top notes that breathes life into her streets and shared spaces. Take in the city from the Pont de Pierre bridge, where beneath you, waters from the far-off Pyrenees glide to the Bay of Biscay. Once in the city, grand arches and gatehouses from past ages welcome you to a place which became one of the Enlightenment's brightest stars. Bordeaux is a city whose skyline is graced with the turrets and spires of faith, such as the bell tower of St. Michael's Basilica and the twin spires of the Cathedral Saint André. Bordeaux's monuments and civic architecture reach for the heavens too. Cool off by the Girondin monument, whose soaring column lifts the spirit of liberty skyward for all to see. In a victory place, gaze up at the monument to viniculture, which twists like a vine reaching for the sun. While from the rooftop of the Bordeaux's opera house, playful muses inspire all those who pass below. You'll find plenty of inspiration at the Aquitaine Museum, from the cave paintings of prehistory to the city's rise as one of the world's great trading ports. Pause by the cenotaph of Michel de Montaigne, who advises fellow citizens, the value of life lies not in the length of days, but in the way we use them. And the people of Bordeaux use their days very well, So to get the most from your visit, simply do as they do. When it's time to relax, take a stroll beneath the avenues of plain trees. Work up a thirst on the riverfront, or in the warmer months, splash in the mists at Place de la Bourse. When it's time to shop, follow the local fashionistas down the Rue Sainte Catherine, Europe's longest shopping street. Or join the treasure hunters amid the city's vintage shops and market stalls. When it's time to eat, choose from menus filled with centuries of Aquitaine tradition. Or fill your basket with the fruits of Bordeaux's fields forests and waters at Capucin Market. The people here love their beer, thanks in no small part to the British who ruled Aquitaine for 300 years. But of course, when it comes to drinking in Bordeaux, wine is everything. Step into the vaults of the Wine and Trade Museum and learn how the French passion for viniculture and Britain's insatiable thirst for claret made Bordeaux a global wine superstar in the 1800s. Head downriver past the incredible Jacques Chabandelmas Bridge to another architectural marvel, Cité du Vin. 
more than a museum, Cité du Vin is a multi-sensory temple to the history, culture and science of wine. Take a helicopter tour across 20 of the planet's most important growing regions. Explore the unique profiles of popular varieties. Then, on the top floor, enjoy a complimentary glass while drinking in the views of a city that has long been hailed as the wine capital of the world. Bordeaux ships over 600 million bottles of wine to the world each year but some of the most exciting bottles never leave the city. Visit the city's wine shops, where the flavors of Bordeaux's wine regions can be explored in a single afternoon. But to truly understand the character of Bordeaux, you must walk among the vines. Just 15 minutes west from the city center is Chateau Pape Clément one of the oldest vineyards in Bordeaux. Here, in the gravelly soils of the Graves region, a wine-loving Pope tended vines that produce liquid miracles. Head deeper into the Graves appellation, a landscape filled with castles, chateaux and vineyards which stretch away through space and time. into Sauterne, whose sweet wines were so loved by George Washington, he ordered 30 cases at a time. Then stretch your legs in Bazas, a two and a half thousand year old town renowned for its fine beef steaks and Gothic cathedral. To the east of Bordeaux, the soil changes to limestone and clay and so the flavors change again. Be sure to visit Saint-Emilion, a hilltop town where medieval walls rise from solid rocks and vines grow amid the ruins of a vast Dominican monastery. The Merlot and Cabernet Franc produced here have been touched by the divine. So set aside a weekend to immerse your palate in the flavors and crafts of this World Heritage Site. Whether you explore her wine regions for a month or just a day, once you have experienced the vineyards around Bordeaux, the city takes on an even richer glow. There is a river in southern France which bends like the crescent of the moon and on this bend is Bordeaux whose colors, moods and flavors can take a hundred happy lifetimes to explore. So don't wait until your next life. Bordeaux is ready to savor today. It's dotted with over 100 volcanoes, yet is home to Europe's largest glacier. It's perched on the edge of the Arctic Circle, yet is warmed by the Gulf Stream. Iceland truly is the land of fire and ice. It's also the land of story. of human hands are few and far between on this windswept land. Footprints are quickly reclaimed, but stories linger forever. Such is the sheer force and beauty of this place that Viking warriors have been transformed into poets and family stories into epic sagas. When Norseman Ingolfur Arneson 
first caught sight of these shores over 1100 years ago, he cast the wooden seat pillars of his chieftain's throne overboard and vowed to build his farm wherever they washed up. Three years later, the pillars were found and a settlement was born. That settlement became Reykjavik, Iceland's capital, a city two-thirds of Icelanders now call home. With a population of only 300,000, Iceland can feel like the most isolated place on Earth. Yet Reykjavik is only a three-hour flight from London and just under six from New York. Reykjavik is one of those places that's not sure if it's a big town or a small city, and therein lays its charm. It's relaxed and welcoming, yet possesses a fierce creativity and cultural life that holds its own against other European capitals. Most buildings here are a response to the natural environment, simple and low to beat the North Atlantic winds, colorful to brighten the spirits through the long, dark winters. Yet there's grand civic architecture here too, buildings truly inspired by Iceland's natural beauty. Like a spire from a fairy tale ice castle, the soaring central tower of Hallgrimskirja watches over all of Reykjavik. Designed to mirror the geometric shapes of ancient lava flows, few other churches in the world so honor the natural world. Iceland's conference and concert center, Harpa, is designed to reflect the city's sky, harbor, and cultural energy. Once again, the island's dramatic geologic formations are honored here, as well as the incredible winter spectacle of the Northern Lights. Icelanders value their heritage buildings too. When Reykjavik modernized in the mid-20th century, dozens of the city's older buildings were relocated to the last of the city's farms. Today, Arbeiersafen serves as a museum which allows visitors to walk through the pages of earlier times. While at the National Museum of Iceland, take a voyage through Icelandic history, from the present day back to the settlement age. Wherever you step in this city, nature beckons you. Over windswept waters, across the mountains, and into limitless horizons. Many of the country's most popular sites are within easy reach of Reykjavik, often by public transport. Immerse yourself in the spirit of Iceland at the Blue Lagoon. Here, and at hundreds of volcanic baths across the island, locals come to soak in the healing thermal waters share gossip with neighbors, and even conduct business meetings. Not far from Reykjavik is an area known as the Golden Circle, which encompasses three of Iceland's greatest natural wonders. Just 30 miles from the capital is Thingvellir National Park, considered the country's heart and soul. Here you can actually walk between the tectonic plates of North America and Europe that have been drifting apart for millennia. Stand upon the shore of the country's largest lake, wander the grass-covered lava flows, and imagine the clans who gathered here for Iceland's open-air parliament for two weeks each year, for over 800 years. Also in the Golden Circle, experience a boiling cauldron of hissing steam vents and belching mud pools at the Geysir Geothermal Field. The Great Geysir itself has been quiet in recent years, but nearby, its little brother Strokur still puts on a show 
thrusting water into the heavens every 10 minutes. If there's one natural wonder in the golden circle that outshines them all, it's Gullfoss. Early last century, the waterfall was threatened by a hydroelectric project until a local farmer's daughter walked barefoot to Reykjavik and threatened to throw herself from the falls unless the project was stopped. Today, that woman is regarded as Iceland's first environmentalist and the Golden Falls have been protected forever. For many visitors, their Icelandic story continues no further than Reykjavik and the Golden Circle, which is a shame, because the further you roam, the greater the adventure. Iceland's main ring road circles the entire island, stringing together an endless series of epic landscapes and tales. An hour and a half's drive east from Reykjavik is one of the world's most beautiful waterfalls, Seljalandsfoss. Follow the trail behind a 200-foot veil of pure glacial water, where throughout the ages, adventurers have come to pause and breathe in the mists of this sacred place. Drive another 18 miles east to Skogafoss, where according to folklore, a Viking buried his chest of gold behind the falls. Years later, a local boy found the chest and attempted to wrench it from its hiding place, only to tear off its handle before the chest vanished again. On sunny days, the falls create a double rainbow, a treasure in itself. Continue eastward towards Vik, the southernmost village in the country. Here, wedged between the mountains and the sea, lie some of Iceland's most dramatic landscapes, weather, and legends. Explore the basalt sands of Black Beach, considered one of the most beautiful non-tropical beaches in the world. Just offshore rise the basalt sea stacks of Reynisdrangar. Locals say the formations are the remains of two trolls heading out to sea, who, when caught by the rising sun, were frozen in the morning light. The shorelines here are made up of otherworldly rock formations and caves, like Halsanefshelir, said to be a monster's lair until a landslide sealed the entrance only a century ago. Hike across the natural arch of Dirhole and sit surrounded by puffins. While below, waves that have traveled uninterrupted all the way from Antarctica end their journey against Iceland's most southerly point. Follow the ring road for another two hours into the ethereal light of Jökulsárlón Lake. Here, at the tongue of Vatnajökull, Europe's largest glacier, icebergs break away and float for years, melting down until they are small enough to tumble out to sea. Magnet for photographers and filmmakers, Jökulsárlón has been the setting for modern-day legends like James Bond, Batman, and Lara Croft. From the wild, windswept shores of the east coast to the volcanic wonders of the north, Iceland's ring road offers one jewel after another, all strung together with mile upon mile of absolute solitude. Stand before the northern horseshoe falls of Selfos,
and just downstream, feel the earth rumble beneath your boots at Europe's mightiest waterfall, Detifos, whose plume can be seen over half a mile away. Nearby, the Mühvatten region awaits, whose centerpiece is a tranquil lake surrounded by nature in all its violent beauty. Take a careful walk through the boiling landscape of Namafjell. Lose yourself amid the lava pillars and dark castles of Dimuborgir, the place where Satan is said to have landed when God cast him from heaven. Then, peer into the caldera of Krafla volcano and witness the incredible geothermal power that resides just beneath the ice. Just to the west of Mivatn is a waterfall forever linked to a turning point in Iceland's epic narrative. When civil war threatened to tear the island in two in the 10th century, Iceland's law speaker united the country under one faith, Christianity. In a symbolic act of conversion, the chieftain hurled his pagan totems off the falls, which have been known as Gudafoss, the waterfall of the gods, ever since. After a few days on the road, the tiny city of Akureyri appears like an arctic oasis. Known as the capital of the north, Akureyri is the perfect place to warm up and enjoy some comfort and culture before heading off into the wilds again. There are some stories we never want to end, that we never want to put down. But rest assured, this is only an introduction. In Iceland, every side road, every path, is a story waiting to unfold. From the vast interior to the west fjords, each untouched beach and windswept plain is an unwritten page. So come and live your own Icelandic story. It's one you'll keep telling for the rest of your days. Paris is situated in northern France on the banks of the River Seine. With a population of over 12 million people, the French capital is at the heart of the Ile-de-France region. Paris earned her name the City of Light during the Age of Enlightenment when many visionary ideas were born. It is a light that has remained undimmed and which now attracts 42 million visitors a year, making Paris the most visited city in all the world. Paris is a city easily explored by metro, taxi and bicycle. But her charms are best found on foot. Her attractions are never far apart. And in between, well, merely walking your streets is to wander through picture postcards. The engine room of Paris is La Défense. This modern business district, filled with light and art, is testimony that Paris is designed for living, even when at work. From the futuristic Grand Arche at La Défense, the six-mile-long historic axis of Paris leads us back into France's grand past. The Arc de Triomphe, built by Napoleon, rises from the center of Place Charles de Gaulle and offers commanding views of the 12 grand avenues which radiate outwards like a star. From the Arc de Triomphe, the Champs-Élysées continues along the historic axis. 
This grand avenue is where Parisians come to dine, shop, enjoy the theater, and to celebrate life. Gradually opening into formal gardens and majestic buildings, the Champs-Élysées merges into the largest square in Paris, the Place de la Concorde. Just a short stroll away is the world's greatest treasure house of art, the Musée de Louvre. Once a 14th century palace, today the Louvre is the most visited art gallery in the world. With over 35,000 artworks, her most famous residents are the Mona Lisa and the Venus de Milo. But be warned, this collection of priceless artworks and antiquities is simply too vast to explore in just one day. Not far from the Musée de Louvre stands the Centre Pompidou, displaying the largest collection of modern art in Europe. Parisians are still debating whether this radical design is the vision of a madman or a genius. Notre Dame Cathedral is situated on Ile de la Cité, a natural island in the River Seine. Completed in 1345, this Gothic masterpiece, with her flying buttresses and gargoyles, has played center stage to some of the defining moments of French history and literature. Parisians see it as their duty to enjoy life to its fullest. The Luxembourg Gardens, with its grand bassin, fruit groves, and over 100 statues and fountains, is the ideal place to grab a deck chair and play the Parisian at rest. Nothing says Paris like the Eiffel Tower. The Iron Lady can be seen from all over the city. However, nothing can prepare you for the moment when you first stand at her feet or the views from the top that you will hold dear for a lifetime. Looking north, the city rises into the hillside neighborhood of Montmartre. Once the artistic center of Paris, her twisting streets and narrow lanes were at one time the home of Picasso, Dali and Van Gogh. They are the perfect place to lose yourself and discover those special Parisian moments. But you can never be lost for long in Montmartre. As long as you head upwards, you'll eventually come to a gleaming white crown, Sacré-Cœur Basilica. Leave the bustling city behind and step through the gates of the Cimetière du Père Lachaise. Here, amid the quiet world of birdsong and introspection, you can pay your respects to Jim Morrison, Oscar Wilde, and some of the world's greatest minds from whom Paris is now forever home. Once a day's coach journey from central Paris, the Palace of Versailles is now an easy half-hour train ride away. This magnificent 17th century chateau welcomes everyone, from heads of state to backpackers. The River Seine runs right through the heart of Paris, creating a natural divide between her famous left and right banks. Of her 37 bridges, the Pont Alexandre III is considered the most ornate, while the graceful Pont des Arts offers some incredible vistas of the city. Artists and photographers gather here to capture the light, while lovers attach padlocks to the railings, as if to say, this is Paris. Now we are Paris too. Virgin Islands are situated in the Caribbean, just a three-hour flight from Miami. Located southwest of the British Virgin Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands are made up of three main islands and surrounded by around 50 smaller caves and islets. The 
islands are lush with vegetation and caressed by sparkling waters. Though celebrated for their sandy beaches and idyllic scenery, things haven't always been so peaceful here. The island group was occupied by many European countries throughout their history until the United States purchased them from Denmark in 1917. Over 100 years later, the islands remain a U.S. territory, popular with American sun worshippers and cruise passengers as they require no passport and the main currency is the U.S. dollar. The largest of the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Croix, was first named Santa Cruz by Christopher Columbus in 1493. way to taste the historical flavors of the island is at the Cruzan Rom Distillery. Let the enticing aroma of fermented molasses lure you to this enduring establishment where the spirit of St. Croix has been lovingly bottled for over 200 years. The island's fertile soils were once coveted for the farming of sugar, tobacco, cotton and indigo. A state whim museum was one of the most successful sugar plantations in the region and today it remains a popular stop for history lovers. Wander through the sprawling colonial residence and slave quarters which evoke the island's often heartbreaking past as well as its uplifting tales of liberation. To the leeward side of the island is Frederickstead, the island's main port town. Plagued by pirates, the Dutch built Fort Frederick here in the 1750s. It was from this fort in 1848 that the Danish governor freed the island slaves at the 11th hour to quell a violent uprising. On the eastern side of St. Croix, admire the island's colorful European influence in Christianstead. Once the capital of the Danish West Indies, this town is a postcard-worthy example of Danish architecture and style. Just a 20-minute flight north of St. Croix is St. Thomas, the second largest island in the territory. St. Thomas is home to the U.S. Virgin Island capital, Charlotte Amalia, a bustling port town which is often dominated by enormous luxury liners. Catch the St. Thomas skyride up the mountain to get commanding views of the vibrant port or climb the stairs to Blackbeard's Castle, a pirate watchtower built by the Danes in the 17th century. Sharing this harbour view are grand manor houses which date back to the late 1600s. Gaze out from their intricate balconies. You never know, you might just spot a pirate ship. Just a 15-minute drive to the east is Frydendal, a settlement that entices honeymooners and romantics with its beachside resorts and restaurants. Make your way to the side of the island to indulge in a little R&R with someone special and perhaps even a cocktail or two. The east coast is blessed with abundant sandy beaches and calm, clear waters and chances are you'll find a sheltered cove all to yourself. Once you've explored St. Thomas, take the short ferry ride to St. John. Step ashore at Cruz Bay, the largest of the island towns, and chow down on some traditional Caribbean fare. Like its sister islands, St. John was colonized by the Danes, whose once lucrative sugar plantations now lie in ruins across the island. The most famous of these is Annaberg Plantation, whose mills fell silent when slavery was abolished. Wander through the old slave quarters and crumbling windmill, which overlook Leinster Bay.
explore more plantation ruins just off the shoreline of Cinnamon Bay, where Mother Nature reclaims the time-worn stone structures with each passing year. Step out from the forest shadows onto the sunlit sands of Cinnamon Beach. From here, follow the coast back to Cruise Bay, where you'll find one secluded beach after another. Despite past ravages of slavery and piracy, the U.S. Virgin Islands have become known for their pristine natural beauty and welcoming people. They have healed and grown stronger with each passing generation and are now the perfect port of call for relaxation, recreation and rejuvenation. Vienna is the capital of Austria in Central Europe. It is an ancient fortress city that lies nestled on the eastern fringe of the Alps, on the banks of the Danube River. One hundred years ago, this glittering city gave birth to an artistic and cultural revolution. It was a revolution that changed the future and forever secured Vienna's place as one of the world's great cities. Free thinking flourished in its cafes, and new ideas in music and philosophy became embedded in its cobblestones. Today, visitors flock to Vienna to experience a dynamic art culture set amidst historic streets where Strauss waltzes echo. They come to drink coffee where some of the world's greatest thinkers such as Einstein and Freud spent time and to enjoy some of the world's most magnificent artworks. Although there is an efficient public transport system here, the best way to really savor Vienna is slowly, on foot. Navigate the city by following the Ringstrasse, a wide boulevard around the downtown area, lined with extravagant palaces, galleries, museums, and elegant private homes. Many of Vienna's main attractions lie within the Ring, and Stephansplatz is at its very heart. Order a strong coffee with cream in one of the coffee houses here. Cafes are the very essence of Viennese culture and have been described as places where time and space are consumed, but only coffee is found on the bill. For generations, famous works have been written at these marble tables and the meaning of life debated. Visit the Daimel Bakery, the original confectioners to the Austrian royal family. Order a Zachetorte, a traditional chocolate cake, and relax with an international newspaper. Viennese attention to detail is not just restricted to its master cake makers. Enjoy the visual feast of the elaborate interiors and the mosaic roof tiles of St. Stephen's Cathedral before heading up to its Gothic steeple to enjoy the view out over the city. Vienna was home to many of the world's greatest composers, such as Beethoven and Strauss, and is known by many as the city of music. Stroll to the Vienna State Opera, one of the greatest opera houses in the world. Take a backstage tour and learn the story of this building that has cast a spell over opera and ballet lovers since the 19th century. A little further along the ring is a Hofburg Imperial Palace. This impressive palace was home to the Habsburg dynasty, who ruled the area for centuries. It currently serves as the official residence for the President of Austria. This palace is also home to the Austrian National Library, where you can examine ancient manuscripts and early copies of some great literary works. Step outside the palace and enjoy the fragrance of the hundreds of roses in the Volksgarten, or People's Garden. Vienna in the early 1900s attracted some of the greatest painters of the time. Although their work at first shocked Viennese society, they eventually gained an enthusiastic following and wealthy patronage. 
Visit the Belvedere to see some of this work, including Gustav Klimt's most famous piece, The Kiss. Go further back in time to admire paintings by European masters, including Raphael, Rubens, and Bruegel at the Museum of Art History. Wander across to the Albertina, where you can see original works by Monet, Picasso, and Matisse. View Mother Nature's masterpieces at the nearby Museum of Natural History, which houses a collection of more than 30 million specimens and artifacts. The Museum Quarter once housed the Imperial Stables. Relax with a drink, or just watch the people go by in this cultural precinct which regularly features modern art installations. Venture a little further afield to discover the Schönbrunn Palace, just to the southwest of Vienna city center. You can almost believe the Emperor is about to step out onto the grounds of this 1,400-room palace that used to be the summer residence of the Habsburg family. Vienna has a long and proud tradition of winemaking, and there are many vineyards lying within the city boundaries, where you can enjoy traditional meals like Wiener Schnitzel matched with local wines. Before you leave the city's outskirts, pay your respects at the final resting place of some of Vienna's most famous residents. No visit to Vienna is complete without a visit to the historic Wiener Prater. Climb aboard a wooden gondola on the 19th century Riesenrad and enjoy the timeless view over the city. As the sun sets, visit St. Charles Church, widely considered to be one of the city's greatest buildings. Vienna at night is nothing short of breathtaking. Dine in one of the traditional restaurants and then take in a show at the elegant Burgtheater or enjoy an open-air performance in one of the squares. Vienna is a truly inspirational city. It is a city in which you can walk in the footsteps of some of history's greatest minds, explore monumental palaces and cathedrals, and stand before priceless artworks. So, pull up a chair, order a coffee, a generous slice of Sachertorte, and let your heart be serenaded by this most lyrical of cities, Vienna. <laughs>